Join me in standing for the processional of our graduates of the class of 2014. I'm going to be right in your way, <laughs> but you don't care. <laughs> Would you please remain standing for two verses of America the Beautiful and our school anthem led by our social studies teacher, coach, and designated vocalist from our school, Mr. Brendan Hyde.
Thank you all. Please be seated. And thank you to Nathaniel Drew, our pianist, and the next president of the Boys Student Council. Marshy School Board of Directors and School Council, graduates, students, parents, faculty, alumni, families, friends, and special guests. Good afternoon and welcome to this 32nd graduation ceremony from Marshy School of the Age of Enlightenment. In the daily deluge of emails, this one stood out. It was unusual and unsolicited. It seems a video production company in Montreal, Canada had developed a national television series called Schools Like No Other. They'd already visited a sumo wrestling school in Japan, a butler's school in Holland, a Bollywood school in India, and a semester at sea school afloat. They discovered Maharshi's school and wanted to know more about consciousness-based education and a school that would boldly proclaim that nothing was more fundamental to education than the quality of a student's awareness or consciousness, how awake they are to their environment and to themselves. What a concept. <laughs> they were legitimate. In fact, they were a wonderful group of French Canadians they visited the campus for a week to see how we achieve 200% in education, both inner development and outer success. They filmed in the school, in families' homes, in the community, and the program aired across Canada this winter. Our outer success was in full display this year. Six state champion teams in Destination Imagination, four of whom finished in the top 20 the Global Finals International Competition. Southeast Iowa Super Conference champions in art, photography, a judges award, and in quiz bowl in our first year of competition. Grand prizes in both junior and senior di divisions of the, senior, of the science and engineering fair here in Iowa. Another national merit scholar. The Fairfield High School soccer team, bear with me, was a conference co-champion this year, and half of the starters were from Maharshi School. And that included Say Sain, who was first team all conference. <laughs> Our seniors were accepted at 36 colleges and universities across the, the country. And as you may have heard, we capped this year with the boys' tennis team's triple crown champions in singles, doubles, and teams. But what truly distinguishes our school is how we pioneered this new approach to education. Here we prove that you can take time to transcend, that if you invest in rest, that will pay dividends through every other aspect of life. When I'm asked how this school is unique, truly a school like no other, I say often it's verticality, it's depth, and that's what makes all the difference here. Next year, our graduates are going to go out to colleges and universities all over, and they'll meet students who know only one level of mental functioning. They open their eyes in the morning, and the buzz begins. And at the end of the day, they close their eyes and hope that their mind can settle back down to sleep. But students at this school know another reality. Because twice a day, they've taken the time to transcend, to go to quieter, deeper levels, more creative levels of their own consciousness. They know that verticality of thought. And when they come out of those quiet meditations, they've not only dissolved stress that continues to accumulate in other students, but they've also optimized their brain functioning. Their brain has bathed in coherence. And each day, more and more of that is accessible to them in their daily activity. Our students also have the benefit of a unifying subject. They study this along with all of their other classes. It's called the science of creative intelligence, the science of consciousness. It describes the development of consciousness, 
but also fundamental universal principles of nature that can apply to every subject and area of life. Our students can step back from all the details of any lesson and see an underlying big idea or principle that not only connects two different subjects like mathematics and literature, but also connects to them themselves. This is depth of thinking. It becomes a skill and habit for our students. It's depth of knowledge, and it's what educators call higher order thinking skills. So depth of thinking, depth of knowledge. But during these past few days, what we've seen perhaps more than any other is depth of relationship. When students get stress out of the way, when they have a systematic means to know themselves and to think independently, their interactions, their relationships can take on an uncommon depth. That's the verticality that's the product of consciousness-based education on display in these wonderful young men, men and women. All of this pioneering wisdom we owe to the tradition that is depicted behind me. These are many of the greatest teachers in this tradition. We call it the Vedic tradition of India. For thousands of years, this knowledge was passed down, generation after generation, teacher to student like that, like the Western tradition of Socrates, Plato, Aristotle, until the founder of our school, Maharshi Mahashyogi. He made the bold decision to bring these practical technologies to the entire world. And he worked tirelessly for more than 50 years as a teacher, a humanitarian, and a scientist to raise individuals and societies from stress and suffering and to usher in an age where every student, every person, could realize their full potential of their consciousness, what he and, and what we call enlightenment. When this is available and taken advantage of by thousands or millions of people around the world, we have what we would call an age of enlightenment, and hence the name of the school. So in addition to receiving a rigorous college preparatory education, these graduates have been given something else, an antidote to stress, a pathway to the highest stages of human development and the tools to arrive there. They represent 200% of life. And we could not be more proud of who they are and what they've become and what they have to give our world. There's a natural segue now to my introducing our speaker of the day. 2006 graduate of Maharshi School, Pookie Freeberg, was a captain here of the volleyball team and most valuable player. She won the science award. She also was a pioneer award winner, was co-valedictorian with her twin sister. She also participated in the Students Creating Peace Network that organized peace exchanges and made presentations around the country to students, educators, and parents about solutions for peace. She graduated in 2009 from Maharshi University in Management with her BA in Media and Communications, and there again served in leadership positions, president of the Global Student Council. Puki could have gone out and done anything. Highly qualified, highly impressive, and yet six months later she chose to complete enroll in and complete the Transcendental Meditation Teacher Training Program in Bulgaria. She was committing herself to continuing her role as a pioneer. That next year, she began her work as a project manager, project director, and lead TM teacher for the David Lynch Foundation in Los Angeles. She started the first TM program in Los Angeles at Children of the Night a shelter and school for children who have been victims of sex trafficking. She was the lead teacher at the second DLF program in Los Angeles at the New Village Girls Academy, a charter school for girls who are at risk. And she supported TM, teaching, TM teachers with three other DLF schools and programs in Los Angeles 
including a homeless organization and a woman's rehabilitation center by february of this year cookie has already taught five hundred people transcendental meditation Two nights ago, we introduced the Pioneer Award winner as having these qualities. Appreciative of the school and Maharshi's knowledge, balanced, humble, kind, uplifting, respectful, responsible, stable, self-sufficient, a role model for younger students, successful in extracurricular activities and academics. Ladies and gentlemen, a real pioneer is Pookie Friedrich. Good afternoon and congratulations graduates on this truly momentous day and I'm excited to be here to share it with you. Um, over the last two days as I heard you give your farewell speeches and I heard the um, beautiful words of appreciation and recognition, recognition from your teachers, I've just been filled with the deepest sense of gratitude for this school and all of the people here who continue to year after year make it such an incredible place and provide this opportunity for a new group of students to step through these doors and shine and share that brilliant light of our consciousness with the world. So it's truly an honor to be back here on this special day and share with you what I've been up to for the last few years since I graduated and some thoughts and advice that I have gathered from my adventures in the so-called real world. <laughs> um, one thing I know to be true is that it is important to always be upfront and honest. So I'm gonna start by saying that I do not have a super massive black light painting that's magically going to be unveiled <laughs> like Jim Carrey presented in his graduation event uh, address at Marsh University. I tried, but it wouldn't fit in the overhead bin on the plane. Um, I may or may not, however, have another surprise that's equally as cool as that. <laughs> I also won't pretend that I don't know you hoped David Lynch would be your graduation speaker today. I was there when you asked him when you, uh, during your senior trip to Los Angeles. So I'm going to start with a little story that involves my best impression of him so he can be here in spirit with us today. I first met David when I was 18, right after I graduated from RSU school. And I had no idea who he was, but I was immediately impressed by his quirky, genuine authenticity, and compassionate nature. When I met him, he had just started the David Lynch Foundation for Consciousness-Based Education and World Peace. This iconic filmmaker had chosen to use his name, his energy, and resources, and creativity, and worldwide reputation to support something that he believes deeply can transform the world. I have had the great privilege of working with David's foundation for the last four and a half years, teaching transcendental meditation, as Dr. Bell said, to over 550, or 530, more like it now, <laughs> um, inner city students, veterans, women and girls who are survivors of the most wretched abuse in Los Angeles, where I now live. A couple of months before I graduated from college, David called me up out of the blue and said, Pookie, you're going to become a TM teacher and move to Los Angeles and run the show here. <laughs> to which I responded, I'll think about it, David. And he said, no, Pookie, you'll do more than think about it. <laughs> Even with such a direct order from one of the most impressive and inspiring human beings that I know, my response was still, we'll see. And to be honest, at that moment, I really had no intention of doing it. <laughs> However, I woke up the next morning and something inside me was absolutely clear that I was going to become a TM teacher, that this was the right time to step into that adventure. And my mind was questioning me like crazy, like, are you really gonna do that? Is this the right time? How can you afford it? And on and on, like our minds tend to do when we have a big decision to make. However, that voice inside me was clear and strong, and I decided to listen to it, that this was the right time for me to step into this adventure, so I did. 
Uh, within a year from that call from David Lynch, I had graduated from MUM, I had become a TM teacher after five months in the mountains of Bulgaria, and I had moved to Los Angeles to start our first David Lynch Foundation program in LA at Children of the Night. Every day doing this work is an adventure and I absolutely love it. For example, in a single day, I've gone from meditating with former teenage prostitutes, at-risk students, homeless people, to meditating and hanging out with Paul McCartney and his family in their home. <laughs> and one thing that I've come to see through these wide variety of experiences that I have is that people are people. No matter how successful or rich or famous or not, no one in this world is immune to stress or even suffering. And many of the most successful people I've encountered are seeking something more to fulfill them from within from in, and to bring them happiness from inside. They've achieved everything that they thought and were taught would bring them happiness, yet they found that the true happiness they're seeking doesn't lie solely in the material wealth and success that they've achieved. They are deeply grateful when they learn TM and find that this tool is something that so simply and naturally gives access to that happiness, fulfillment, and connection with their true self. Yes, it can be fun hanging out with celebrities, and however, my true passion lies in sharing this tool with the underserved, highly stressed populations who otherwise wouldn't have access to it and really desperately need it. Um, I'm going to share a couple of stories of people I've taught TM over the past few years who have inspired me, and then I'm going to bring my remarks back to you on this, your most important graduation day. The first story is about Liz. Liz is an older African-American woman who I taught at Get Love, which is an organization in Hollywood that helps transition homeless people into her permanent housing. And one of the resources that they offer their clients is TM through their partnership with the David Lynch Foundation. Liz has been homeless and had a pretty rough life. And when she came to me, she was grumpy, she was unhappy, clearly unhealthy, and um, you know, not really, not really thriving, not really loving her life. And a few months earlier, she had attended an TM introductory talk, but at that time had chosen not to learn because someone from her church, out of ignorance really, had told her that it was against her religion. However, when she came to me, she said, after thinking more about it, I realized that this was something that I needed to listen to myself about and do because it's something I know I need for my health. And over the next three days of the TM course, I saw her transform. She was smiling and laughing and friendly. She was practically glowing. And she now says that TM has given her life back. Another story is Annie. She was one of the very first students that I taught at Children of the Night when I first moved to LA. And she was a tough girl. She had a lot of issues with anger. Um, she even said it herself, in quotes, I had a lot of negative energy, but I had to in order to protect myself. I had to put off a don't mess with me vibe in order to survive on the streets. When I heard about TM, I thought it sounded cool, but I never thought I could do it. However, she trusted herself enough to give it a shot. And she listened to that voice inside of her that told her, this is something I need to do. This is something that could really help me. She describes her experience. The first time I did it, it was like the most calming experience I had ever had in my whole life. I didn't want to admit it to anybody, but he really liked it, and I kept doing it. Pretty soon, I started to feel way more calm, relaxed, and a lot happier. I felt like a human again. And the final story I want to share is Mary, a young woman from New Village Girls Academy, which you guys got to visit on your senior trip to LA. Um, we gave our first introductory TM talk there about three and a half years ago. And at the end of the presentation, one girl whose head had been down the whole time, she had not been engaged, she raised her hand and said, will this help me with my depression? She was part of that first pioneering group of girls to learn at New Village, and she describes her transformation. TM opened a door to someone I never knew I could be. So what do these three stories have in common? They're all different ages, different races, different organizations and schools, yet each of they share one common theme. Each of these individuals listened to her intuition and chose to learn TM and embrace it in her life in such a way that 
she experienced a profound transformation. And following that intuition is what I want to talk with you about today. As you graduate from high school and begin the new chapter of this adventure of your lives, there are many choices to be made. Every day, every moment, we're making decisions and choices that set our future in motion. Lately, you've all had a lot of big ones on the table, like where to go to school, what city or country to live in, to take time off and travel or study or go abroad and volunteer. And all of these are big decisions. And with a lot of major life decisions, we're often taught to analyze all our options, think long and hard about it, make lists of pros and cons, and really deeply consider all the factors to be practical. I recently read a book that was very interesting called How We Decide. It's about the neuroscience of how our brain makes decisions. We make thousands of decisions every day. A lot of these mini decisions we make very effectively and our brain is doing it without our interference. The key thing that I took away from this book was essentially that with life's big decisions, we actually shouldn't think too much about them. That um, when there are more variables and factors to take in, it can actually overwhelm the brain's capacity to process all the information. And we can think ourselves into a decision that might not actually be what we truly want or is best for us. The book suggests Um, that our brain just knows, and it provides evidence through different studies and anecdotes that the more variables a decision has, the more we should allow our instinct to rule. And this concept resonated with me as one of the most important things that I learned at Marishi School. One of the phrases we hear repeatedly is, be self-referral. In fact, when I was in high school, we heard that term so often that it almost became a joke amongst my classmates, (laughs) not really truly grasping what a significant um, concept this was and how lucky we were to have it instilled in us us at such a young age. Um, Now that I'm out in the real world and see what most students are being taught in the school and by society and by the media, I realize what a powerful gift we have received with that concept. We have grown up with the knowledge and the experience that our truth, our power, our intelligence, our creativity and intuition is within each of us. And we've been practicing accessing that twice a day as part of our education. So many people go through life and never notice. Society teaches us that what's important is to get a job and make money and provide for a family, all of which are great things to do. However, unless we trust ourselves and follow our intuition and live our truth from that subtle place that knows what is right for us, it can be very easy to sacrifice our happiness. So I'm not saying that we shouldn't listen to advice from our parents and teachers and coaches and mentors. No, that's very, very important. Um, Just always remember to check in with yourself as well because only that deep level of intuition knows what is really true and right for us. And that's something that no other person nor society can tell us. This intuition may not be loud and shouting at us. In fact, it can be very quiet and subtle. It's beyond our logical, rational mind. It's beyond the ever-changing level of our emotions and feelings. And it's always there. It's always guiding us to our greatest happiness. We just have to be quiet, get quiet, and listen to it. So is the brilliance, creativity, and inner happiness radiating from the students that he met at Marishi School that inspired David Lynch to start his foundation to bring TM to the at-risk students in the rest of the world. And I see that brilliance in each and every one of you as I see your faces today. And I know that because the education we have been so fortunate to receive here it is going to be a brighter world as you step through these doors. So as you graduate today and prepare to embark on the next chapter of your adventure, these are three thoughts that I want to leave you with. One, think less, trust your intuition, it knows what's up. Two, if something scares you, do it. It's the easiest way to move through fear and will lead to epic adventures and growth. And three, Finally, my favorite quote from Marishi to sum it up, we have an infinite number of reasons to be happy and a serious responsibility not to be serious.
four days ago, I asked David Lynch if he would be willing to make a little video message for all of you. And I thought, you know, he'd record himself talking, hi, congratulations, into a camera. And apparently he spent two days working on this and made this especially for you. And only David would come up with something as incredible and quirky and cosmic as that. So thank you, we love David. <laughs> Very much, Marishi School of the Age of Enlightenment class of 2014. It is an honor for me to be here with you, and I congratulate you on all of your past successes and lessons learned. And I celebrate with you today and in advance of all of the exciting new journeys and enlightening experiences you are sure to undertake. Congratulations. <laughs> First of all, I'm really glad David Lynch followed his intuition and gave you your marching orders. <laughs> and secondly, I'm glad your intuition said to follow him. And I just want to tell you how proud we are of your accomplishments. Congratulations. You'll have our heart's support in your ongoing work, and we hope that you'll come back again and tell us some more stories of your successes. Congratulations. I got to introduce our stage here, and, and I'd like to do that now, if I may. By the way, my name is Richard Bell, I'm the head of Marishi School. <laughs> this is Dr. Bevan Morris. He's the president of Marishi University of Management. He's also the chair emeritus of the Marishi School of the Age of Enlightenment Board of Directors, and he is the prime minister of Marishi's global country of world peace. That's the organization that manages all of the programs and projects of Marishi's global movement now. So we're very honored and put in proud to have Dr. Morris here. <laughs> to my far right is the Dean of Boys, Mr. Tim Walker, wonderful addition, also a graduate of Maharshi School. <laughs> and to my immediate right is Ms. Lori Baumann, the director of our girls' school. Mr. Walker will continue now with our next events. Thank you, Dr. Bell. Thank you, Pookie. That was a wonderful speech. Next, I'd like to invite the presidents of the Girls and Boys School Student Councils, Jessica Orn and Michael Carraza, to present their senior class gift. school career, we've learned and applied five core values, respect, responsibility, solution, service, and transcending. The success of our fundraising for our senior trip to Los Angeles has enabled us to provide solutions for several needs at Marishi School. First, we are purchasing a new printer and supplies so students can more easily obtain hard copies of their assignments. <laughs> Second, we are contributing to the hardware for the live streaming system being used for this weekend's graduation events. With this system, the school can share any number of events with its global community, including as alumni spread out all over the country. Third, we are also beautifying the school and grounds by providing the new landscaping along the walkway to the school so that you can see today, that you can see today, and a trellis in front of the greenhouse. So whether you're watching a Marishi School event live streamed around the world or entering the school on foot, we hope you will remember the class of 2014 and how much we care about our school. Thank you, 2014 senior class. That was a very generous gift. 
<laughs> Next, I'd like to request that you can join me in recognizing the girls' valedictorian of 2014, Avery Travis. <laughs> Girls' School Salutatorian, Hifsa Akbar. <laughs> and the Boys' School Co-Valedictorians, Michael DeAngelis and Syria Sani. Next, we're going to have some words from the winners of this year's 2014 Pioneer Award. First up, if you can join me in welcoming to the stage, Liana Miller. The world is my family. In our little class of 29, there are five continents and 11 countries represented. Five countries in the class of nine girls alone. I have sisters from Guatemala, Ethiopia, China, Holland, and Pakistan. I have brothers from India, the Philippines, Canada, Singapore, China, and De Gambia, as well as my fellow American brothers and sisters from the East Coast, West Coast, and right here in Fairfield. I'd like to recognize that through our high school career, we've also had classmates from Russia, Brazil, France, and Mexico. Wow. <laughs> We also have six different religions in our class. <laughs> Hindu, Catholic, Muslim, Judaism, Protestant, and Buddhism. Some of us have been here since preschool, and some of us just arrived this school year. Some are fourth generation meditators, and some are the first members of their family to be blessed with the gift of Tian. In addition to our cultural differences, we each have different learning styles and approaches to life. This may lead you to believe that we would each feel like the missing piece to a puzzle, dislocated from our origins. But this is not so. Grounded in our common experience that we are all the same, we transcend our differences and feel that we are one family. Just like any family, some relationships are closer than others. But we all respect each other and celebrate each other's strengths and enjoy sharing our different perspectives. Harmony does exist in diversity. We have learned so much from each other and developed so much as people alongside one another with the nurturing and dedication of our teachers and families and the timeless knowledge of Marishi, we will fly higher than eagles because you are the wind beneath our wings. <laughs> now, as we are crossing this threshold, in the words of Marianne Williamson, our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that frightens us most. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. 
There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine, as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It's not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. Thank you. Thank you, Liana. Next, we'd like to welcome the winner of the Boys Pioneer Award, Michael DeAngelis. I am Michael Gabriel DeAngelis, the last of five children from the DeAngelis family to graduate Maharishi School. For now. I have attended Maharishi School since kindergarten, but I will not be talking about the amazing years leading up to this graduation. Instead, I would like to discuss the incredible years we, the class of 2014, have ahead of us. My classmates are quite remarkable. From two state tennis champions, a boatload of destination imagination global finalists, science fair champions, speech competition all-state performers, and leaders in school and community activities. Heck, we even have a golf districts qualifier. <laughs> As pioneers, we have developed the creativity and responsibility necessary to propel us into even greater achievements. Martin Luther King Jr. once said, faith is taking the first step even when you don't see the whole staircase. We will not just achieve great things. We will take the first steps in many directions. We will be the men and women that will lead the future, the men and women that will innovate the next breakthrough, discover the next big thing, be the next superstar. We are prepared to lead our generation to greatness. We are prepared to take the next step. And those accomplishments will not be limited to Fairfield, or just Iowa, or even just the United States. Our class will be global leaders. I don't have to tell you that this school is like no other. Here, we have expanded our awareness and naturally our openness to all cultures. At Margarishi School, we have learned not only to accept people from different cultures, and we all have done that, but more we have welcomed that culture and diversity and grown together. Some may ask us how such a small school can produce such leaders and innovators. I will give you my three reasons. First, transcendental meditation. This gift from Maharishi has allowed us to function with ease from a more comprehensive level. Second, the close-knit community called Fairfield, which is interrelated by hundreds and hundreds of families with connections that go back a long way. It's like one big family. Most importantly, it's the love. The bond and friendships that we have created here. This is a winning combination of TM, community, and friendship. Let's commit to never forget this, for it is the basis of our future success. Thank you.
thank you, Mickey and Liana. Please welcome director of the girls' school, Lori Baum. Great job, both of you. Dr. Mora, Dr. Dow, it is my privilege to report to you that the candidates here assembled have qualified in all respects by successfully completing curricula offered by Marashi School of the Age of Enlightenment, Upper Division, and have been recommended by the faculty and Marashi School of the Age of Enlightenment Board of Directors to be awarded diplomas in recognition of their academic accomplishments. The Marashi School Diploma is a special diploma. Dr. Morris will now read you the text of that diploma. School of the Age of Enlightenment diploma reads, through completion of the consciousness-based education program at the Maharshi School of the Age of Enlightenment, you have developed a profound grasp of the basis of all fields of knowledge in the unified field of natural law, have demonstrated academic excellence and are prepared to undertake college-level study. You have gained through the Maharshi Transcendental Meditation and TMCD programs, including Yogic Flying, the experience of the unified field of natural law as the simplest state of your own awareness and the understanding that all branches of knowledge are different modes of your own intelligence. You have realized that you are a cosmic individual and that your physiology is a perfect expression of Ved and Vedic literature. Your creative genius is blossoming as you enliven in your awareness all the beautiful, evolutionary qualities of the unified field of natural law that are fundamental to education, including infinite creativity, pure knowledge, infinite organizing power, and all possibilities. You spontaneously display evolutionary behavior and ideal citizenship. The ability to fulfill your own interests and promote the interests of the community simultaneously. You radiate harmony and fulfillment into the environment, thereby upholding the constitution of the global country of world peace, <laughs> which is establishing perpetual peace on earth. Thank you, Dr. Morris. Will Mrs. Carter, our college counselor, please come to the podium to read the names of the graduates, and will the candidates for the upper school diploma please rise in preparation to receive their diplomas. Hafsa Akbar.
Adenda Koutmans. Jessica Marina Orn. <laughs> Flower Fayessa Shrek. Bonin and Suresh Ramakrishna Rao Pulapanchala. <laughs> Yeah, go ahead. 
Schroeder. Mrs. Carter deserves a hand for those pronunciations. <laughs> just want to mention that two of our students, uh, Liana Miller and Avery Molyneux, are the children of graduates of our school, second generation. So <laughs> So would the graduates please stand and approach the stage. <laughs> so by the authority vested in me by the Maharshi School of the Age of Enlightenment, Board of Directors, I hereby award to you the upper school diploma with all honors, privileges, and responsibilities thereunto pertaining. Of course, you've already flipped. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I present the graduating class of 2014. Now, would all the new senior class please come forward, the class of 2015. Seniors, you can all be seated for just a moment. New seniors, by taking these seats, you're assuming your new role as the senior class from Maharshi School. It is your responsibility 
to do your best to inspire and lead all the other Marcy School students to the goal of living their full potential. We are confident you'll do a great job next year. Congratulations. Ladies and gentlemen, after the recession, is after the seniors leave, there'll be a group photo of them in the courtyard outside on this beautiful day. Uh, so if you will, please uh, delay graduating them until they're outside and that's taken care of. And then uh, there'll be photos and a reception in the central lobby of this building. Follow me. All right, gang. <laughs> So I want to be the first to predict the direction your lives will go the moment you become a graduate of this school. South, and then east, and then south, and then west, and then south, and then west. And that's going to take you to the courtyard. And every step you take in that direction is going to take you closer to your independence, closer to going your separate ways, closer to flying off to all parts, just like the caps that you'll soon throw into the air. This path will also lead you in the direction of your goals. It will also lead you in that inward direction that you have now established in your lives. You've earned this day. You've earned that door. You've earned the opportunity to enter college and go off on the adventures that you will. But as you separate, you won't go alone. This community, this school, will always be a part of your life. This will always be your home. You also won't go without a compass. As our wonderful speaker today said, you have this intuition, you have this self-referral practice now, take full advantage of that. So your task is to go out, enjoy your life to the fullest, enjoy yourself to its fullest, live 200%, go out and be great. <laughs> such an integral part of this graduation. We'll now give the graduates just a few moments for their picture, and then you can join them in the courtyard. Thank you so much. And if you've watched this around the world or the nation, please send us a note and let us know how the quality was. Jay Gurdell.